Whether you're looking for answers to specific life questions or seeking to become the best version of you possible, welcome to the Mental Breakdown and Psych Reg podcast, where we offer insight, information, and strategies based upon research and years of practice as clinical psychologists. So sit back, have a listen, and get connected with our hosts, Dr. Bernie Wilkinson and Dr. Richard Marshall. Welcome back. Richard, today we have an article, blog, I still don't know the difference between articles and blogs. But anyways, we, we have another blog from um, a person that we've, who's Been worked, here we've read before, right? right? Scott Tretinario. Mm-hmm. Tretinario? Something like that. I, I'm Something. not good at the, right. at the names. Right. But in, this is an article in PsychReg, at right. psychreg.org, um, entitled, You Don't Have to Be Run by Your Fears. Right. Right. Yes. So you don't have to allow your fears to dictate and to govern what you do and where you go and all of that Mm -hmm. stuff. It's not running from your fears, but you don't have to be run by your fears. You don't have to be controlled by your fears. Yes. Though we need fear. Yeah. Fear is an adaptive Mm -hmm. emotion. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, and and he talks about that at the very beginning. Fear is a normal, natural, healthy, critical part of our biology. Right. It's one of our innate... Um, emotions. Right. Okay. The, we, we have several emotions that um, have served us over time. Mm-hmm. And uh, fear is one of those. Right. Because from fear, um, you learn what's dangerous. Right. And you learn what to avoid. Because okay. avoiding those things that are dangerous ensures your survival. That's right. If you don't have that ability, right. um, those genes are going to be missing yeah. from the species. Right. And if you don't have the ability to recognize and remember what's um, harmful, mm-hmm. then um, you're you're going to um, you're going to get damaged. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. W- one day, <clears throat> when when scientists have got to the point where they can we can time travel, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that will happen I'm, one day. I'm gonna try to stay with you here. To stay time with me. Travel. The anthropological studies done on our on cavemen and our ancestors oh, would be will right. be fi- fantastic. Oh, that would be. I would good. love to know. If anxiety existed in cavemen, because of course, well, anxiety. Let me rephrase: anxiety disorders. <clears throat> oh, because fear, <laughs> life-threatening things were reality then. You know, the it, meaning that you had to be cautious of certain things. You had to be aware of certain things because, you know, there were, you know, bears and saber-toothed cats and things like that that would attack you um today we don't have that right. we you know unless you live in the woods or you're you know I can, you, th- those kinds of dangers are not ever I'm, present i'm pretty sure i can answer the question what would your answer be it was no it's not a disorder there is no disorder in in cavemen right well what were they doing those were real fears right okay ours are ours are no, those are real fears. Those are you're, you're afraid of animals. But did they have panic spiders, attacks, Jupiter. for example? Like, did you did you have did they have PTSD? Sure. Um, it, it, but because at that time, if we think about it, mm-hmm. at that time to suffer from PTSD or something like agoraphobia right. or something like that would mean that you would not survive either. And I would guess that you didn't have like. Uh, you know, where you could call in somebody, you know, delivery, mm-hmm. food delivery and things like that. <laughs> right. So if you did not, if you were too scared to venture outside of your cave, right. you would not survive. Right. That's right. So did they have, you know, uh, so what was the nature of those kinds of conditions then? Sure. I think they had them all. You think so? Yeah. I don't yeah. know. It, but that would be f- fantastic. I, I would love to know. But when you think of those kinds of anthropological culture, studies. Even the Native American culture, mm-hmm. which wasn't caveman. Um, it was... Um, it was recent, mm-hmm. you know, we're talking about thousands of years ago, but um, it took so much to stay alive every day. Mm-hmm. It took so much. I mean, you either had to be doing the work yourself or contributing to the work right. that uh, there was little time left right. to have those kind of feelings. Right. You know, so, yeah. but I'm, I'm sure that it, I'm sure that it existed. Yeah. I'm not sure that you could express it. Yeah. It, it, it's so interesting. Yeah. Um, but we have to have time travel to do that, right? I think so. Because otherwise we can't do any observations. Um, we can't really see what th- what happened or talk to them. I wonder what language they would speak. <laughs> Some days we 
We begin these podcasts with a um, just thinking about it. Flight of fancy. I don't know where he's going to go some mornings. You know, usually it's Richard. Today we're going to talk about, uh-huh. and other days it's when we can time travel, and then I'm thrown. Yeah, I said, okay, let we me would catch not up. Be able let to, me catch up. <laughs> we would not be able to use a DeLorean to That's do right. that time travel. Hey, now I know. See, I understand that reference. You know that reference. I know the reference. All right. I've never seen a whole one of those. I've never seen an entire. You've never seen an entire DeLorean Back to the Future Only... movie. I've never. I know that I've seen clips, pieces, parts. So today's topic is. It just bothers me so much. Fear when you say things like that. <laughs> If we could time travel, I would go back in time to make sure that you watch those movies so that we could time How many are there? Three. Mm -hmm. All right. So, guys, folks, it's it's just so difficult (laughs) to to reference our last podcast. It's just so hard sometimes. (laughs) That's right. It's not hard. So, yeah, so all of that. What's hard is childbirth, (laughs) dealing with Richard Marshall, (laughs) tyranny. (laughs) Man, it is. It I'm is. I'm on the list. It is a challenge. I made the list. I'm what's hard. <laughs> you at par with uh, child parenting and, and child birth. <laughs> overthrowing authoritarian governments <laughs> and <laughs> having to do a podcast with mm, Dr. Marshall. Mm, fun stuff. You see what I'm up against. So, so I don't know how we got to any of that stuff, but here we are with um, fear. All right. So fear is natural. Fear is uh, normal. Fear is necessary. But you know, mm. we live in a in a world now where we have stimuli that evoke fear and anxiety and stress that aren't truly dangerous right but they are perceived as dangerous and they produce the same feeling right the brain doesn't distinguish between a real fear and an imagined fear there's only a single fear response right and whether the fear is real right. or not doesn't matter. Right. If you trigger that right. biological, um, those biological structures, the structures are the same. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, so mm-hmm. what we have to, so, so what happens to most people is that when they have some of these fears right. or anxieties, what they will do is they will, they, they will again allow their life to be somewhat governed by those fears. That's right. And anxieties. Right. They will. They will not go places because they are fearful of those places. Mm-hmm. They will they will stay home. They will avoid certain circumstances. All because of these, you know, irrational oftentimes fears and, they are. and anxieties. Right. Yeah, because nothing you're not gonna die if you go someplace. I mean you you if you entered into the cave of a bear, mm-hmm. you could die. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're not going to die if you go to a party that you don't want to go to right. or, or, or do some other activity that, that right. is uh, intimidating in some way. So you're not going to, but you're going to elicit mm-hmm. the same fear response right. as if you're entering the, ca- right. the, the cave bear, the bear cave. Right. Cave I was bear. thinking Clan of the Cave Bear. Oh, that was Those a good movie. Those books that were. You didn't see the it movie? Was a movie? It was a book. It was a series of books. <laughs> okay. This was like back in your day uh, no. with the movie. Well, no, it was in color, it was. so it was probably... It was in color, so it was after me. <laughs> it's like after your day. Wow. <laughs> two, two little things. Man, that's like double whammies there. It is. I've been... Um, I am digging this podcast okay. today. This is fantastic. We might, we might edit this stuff out and we might not. It depends how it turns Who's out. Who's in charge of editing? <laughs> the, uh, so the, probably not. The IT person <laughs> in the group. So... Uh, so all of this leads to uh, the article talking, right. then talking about right. William Glasser, yeah. which is a person, his theory, his choice theory, is something that mm-hmm. we mention often here on the right. podcast. Mm-hmm. Because what, what William Glasser talked about is that you know, we, we have a choice. Right. We, we, we have the opportunity to make decisions to go in, in this direction or that direction. Right. And, and when we do so, we are, we are taking some control right. over some of these decisions. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the idea is, is that if we can then, if we can use choice theory and right. we can build from that to the point where we make decisions to do things because we want to do them and not allow our fears to make those choices for us. That's right. Because the emotion, the emotion itself can either be motivating or mm-hmm. it can be debilitating. Right. Okay. Um, and what, what we don't want to have happen is that 
fears control us. You know, we right. very often say to, especially, we say to, to all of our patients, but especially to uh, the youngsters, um, you can't let your emotions control you. Right. You have to be in control of your right. emotions. So William Glasser developed what is called now called choice therapy. Mm-hmm. It used to be called reality therapy. But choice therapy is you have a choice. It's up to you. Mm-hmm. And he said there are four components. Right. Okay. To, um, what are they, four components to life, four components to human behavior, human behavior mm-hmm. however you want to, however you want to say it. But the four components are acting, right, thinking, right, feeling, physiology. Right. Okay. So you have four things. And of these four, you have no control over your physiologic response. Right. You're, you're going to react a certain way. Your body is going to shiver or you're going to be startled, mm-hmm. you have a startle reflex. So there's some physiologic state that's created. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's one. Second is feeling. Mm-hmm. You have the feeling of, you have the emotion of. Right. Okay. I didn't go back and look at which, remember which podcast it was that we talked about right. emotion and we talked about where emotions come from and we did a whole week on you know, some people think that you have the feeling first, right, and then right. you apply right. a label, a, a, an emotional mm-hmm. label to that feeling. Mm-hmm. Some say that you have the emotional label, and then you experience the feeling. And that's some people right. say that it happens at the same time. And that's really that's an important here. idea. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's really an important notion here because do you have the physiologic feeling, and then you say, "Oh, I feel fear," mm-hmm. or you have the feeling, and then you name it, or you name it. So I think it happens. I think it happened simultaneously. Yeah. You know, I think for, I mean, as I think about it, uh, they, they happen together. Okay. Well, I, I think that oh, we should have another podcast to talk about it. Because I think that what happens with a lot of people with anxiety is that they experience a sensation, the physiologic, and then they mislabel it. They And they get overwhelmed by it. Right. Right. They get overwhelmed by it. But and, the, you're right. They mislabel it too. Right. You know, what am I really feeling? Right. Mm-hmm. Now, that can happen. And... and you know, this is the real conflict in in determining all of this is that all of that stuff is internal. That's right. You know, you you experience that feeling and do do you experience that feeling and the thought of the emotion at the same time? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or do you experience that feeling and say, oh man, the last time I felt like this, it was really scary. And so this is a scary, you know, I'm afraid. Right. And, and you have to, you have to part, whether you're a child or an adult, because with children, we will say, I mean, they, they don't have the vocabulary right. to identify the feelings. Right. But with adults, they misidentify the right. feelings. And one of the podcasts, we talked about that, that when, particularly when our teenage children mm-hmm. uh, react and push mm-hmm. back, right. they, we get angry because they're disrespectful. Mm-hmm. But the real feeling, what we're really feeling is hurt. Right. That they would right. that they would attack us that way, mm-hmm. but we label it as um, "I'm angry with you now." Right. I'm really hurt by what you said. Right. Is the more accurate emotion, yeah. but we mislabel it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even as adults, we can mislabel these emotions, and children are notorious for that. You know. Right. Well, I was mad. No, you weren't mad. Somebody hurt your feelings. Right. You know. Yeah. Very different. Absolutely. But and that's why you can't let the emotions right. control you right. because it might be it might not be the real emotion right. and you're going to be reacting in a way that you shouldn't. Right. And so so we've been working our way back. So the physiology we don't have control over. We we have some ability as far as relating to the feeling that we have, um, how we're labeling that. Well, how we um, label it, but right. we don't have control over the feeling. Right. Right. It, it's um, going to occur. Right. Mm-hmm. That's the physiology part. And then we have the thinking, so how we're thinking about it. And that we can control. Right. What, what Glasser says of these four components, we can't control um, our physiology. I can't. Um, mm-hmm. Buddhist monks can. To some, right. to some extent. Right. I mean, you can develop the capacity, but, right. but typically we don't control physiology and we don't control the feeling. The feeling occurs, right. uh, whether we want it to or not, the right. feeling occurs. And the issue of labeling goes along with that. So we can't control those two. Right. But we do have control over how we think about it. And what we do about it, and the acting part. The thinking leads to action. Right. So we do have control over our actions right. because our actions come from how we think about it. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, so the again, the idea is is that if we can see our fears, uh, again, our body's going to react to it. Right. We're going to have these this physiological response, and we're going to have these feelings. But if we can process it, if we can think about it in That's a healthy right. way, and then we can right. act on it in a healthy way, mm-hmm. then again, that is us. That is our 
dictation, our uh, sort of governance over our feelings, right. our, over our fears, instead of allowing our fears to govern what we do. That's right. And that's the basis of cognitive behavioral therapy. Right. Is that that's, that's all it is, is that you, let's, let's rethink this thing. Right. Okay. Let's think about it differently, which will lead to different actions. Yeah. Okay. So, Absolutely. Um, so he, it's a nice article. He, he talks about it very well here. Right. Uh, because... It's a really important. Hmm. It's a really important topic. A lot of people. Anxiety is the most. It's the most common prevalent, right? And most prevalent mm -hmm. uh, condition, uh, and it's prevalent everywhere. Right. Uh, in schools, at work, uh, right. in the doctor's office, just about anywhere you go, mm -hmm. there's anxiety right. uh, abounds. So. Right. Yeah. Uh, but I do know. Well, I think there's another article that we're going to talk about where we, we we can confront our fears. Yeah. You know that we must confront them. We can't just. I don't know whether it's this one or not. We can't just um, yes. If we don't, if we don't do the, if we don't rethink, if we don't think about mm -hmm. them differently, we have to confront our fears. Mm -hmm. We, you and I, both know people who are governed by their fears. Right. They they look at a situation and the first thing they do is they think of all the things that could go wrong. Right. All the things that are dangerous. Even a car ride. You mm -hmm. know, like. Um, my daughter's going to drive back to school or, mm -hmm. or she's going to drive back right. to college. My goodness, a hundred things could happen. Right. But if I allow my fear of what might happen, I would keep her at home right. and she wouldn't have those experiences. Or you would okay. drive her. Right. I would right. drive her myself. Unless you confront the fear. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the things that we've talked about with cognitive behavioral therapy. Mm -hmm. You just can't change a person's mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can act as though it doesn't bother you. Right. But it really does bother you. Right. And what we have to do is we have to confront these fears mm -hmm. and then act differently. Right. If we don't confront them, for yeah. example, well, I'm no longer afraid. My daughters are afraid of frogs. Well, I'm no longer afraid of frogs. Well, they'll change their behavior, mm -hmm. but they're still afraid of frogs. Mm -hmm. And until you confront that fear, mm -hmm. you're still going to have it. You know, I can get drunk enough to get on it. I can't. But there are people who don't like to fly. Right. Okay. And so they'll take drugs and alcohol yeah. to numb themselves so they can fly. Right. You're acting as though, right. but you're not. You're just not so, allowing the physiological part to happen. That's right. So you can do that. You you're can you're interrupting and, that pathway right. by preventing the physiological. Right. And you can, you can pretend that it doesn't bother you, but you're a nervous wreck the whole time. You know, yeah. uh, riding a roller coaster. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm brave. I can get on it. But you're scared to death. Right. You, know, you haven't really confronted that. Yeah. So he wants you to also take that step to confront it and then change the way. That allows you to really change your thinking about it. Absolutely. As you gain control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely so. Yeah. All right. The link to this article is in the show notes uh, check it out it's a great read yeah this um, is good yeah mm -hmm. uh as always encourage you to follow us um in our various uh formats mm -hmm. itunes uh twitter youtube uh etc um write a review rate us on, on itunes that'd be great uh help other people find us and and check our patreon page patreon.com slash the mental breakdown mm -hmm. uh, we've already got our first contributor which is awesome yeah, and so uh, we're getting closer yeah. hopefully to be able to get the additional help that we need so that right. we can start yeah. preparing and planning for the more plans for 2018 absolutely so but we're right. not going to wait until 2018 I don't want to no we're not no we don't wait the best time to start was 20 years 20 ago. years ago so all right until next time stay happy stay healthy and forget to be afraid 